Hello everyone, welcome to Bible Bites. Good to have your company once again. If you watched our previous video, we talked about the concept of eternal security. So our question for today is, is eternal security just a license to sin? Well, one of the most frequent objections to the doctrine of eternal security is that it allows people to live any way they want and still be saved. This is the concept that people argue against eternal security. Well, while this might be technically true, in reality, it's not true. Because a person who has truly been redeemed by Jesus Christ will not want to live a life characterized by continuous and willful sin. We must draw a distinction, therefore, between how a Christian should live and what a person must do in order to receive salvation. Well, the Bible is clear that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus Christ alone. And the moment a person truly believes in Jesus Christ, he or she is secure and saved through that process of salvation. It's unbiblical to say that salvation is received by faith, but then has to be maintained by works. The Apostle Paul addresses this issue in the book of Galatians 3, Three, when he asks, Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? If we are saved by faith, our salvation is also maintained and secured by faith. You see, any denial of eternal security is, in essence, a belief that we must maintain our own salvation by our own good works and efforts. Now, this is completely antithetical to salvation by grace. We are saved because of Christ's work not our own. And to claim that we must obey God's word or live a godly life to maintain our salvation is really saying that Jesus' death isn't sufficient for our complete salvation. We know that Jesus' death absolutely was sufficient to pay for all of our sins, past, present and future, pre-salvation and post-salvation. Well, does this mean that a Christian can live any way that he or she wants and still be saved? Well, this is essentially a hypothetical question because the Bible makes it clear that a true Christian will not live any way that he or she wants. Christians are new creations. Christians demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit, not the acts of the flesh. 1 John 3, 6 through 9 clearly states that a true Christian will not live in continual sin. In response to the accusation that grace promotes sin, the Apostle Paul declared in Romans 6, 1 through 2, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Eternal security is not a license to sin. Rather, it is the security of knowing that God's love is guaranteed for those who trust in Christ. You see, knowing and understanding God's tremendous gift of salvation accomplishes the opposite of giving us a license to sin. How could anyone, knowing the price that Jesus Christ paid for us, go on to live a life of sin after they've been saved? How could anyone who understands God's unconditional and guaranteed love for those who believe take that love and essentially throw it back into God's face by continuing in sin? Such a person is demonstrating not that eternal security has given him a license to sin, but rather he or she has not truly experienced salvation through Jesus Christ. As 1 John 3, 6 says, Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him.